Ah, uh, Epic Mickey 2. The game loved by most of the Epic Mickey fandom, and literally no one else. It's no secret that Epic Mickey 2 wasn't released in its best shape. The story was basic, gameplay improvements were limited, and the game was prone to glitches. But at least the game followed all the basic lore from the first game, right? Well, in that assumption, you would be wrong. I mean, sure, all the major lore is followed. Oswald isn't replaced by Julius or Cat or anything. But when it got to the nitty gritty bits of lore, like NPCs or world layouts, the first game isn't exactly followed to a T. And that's what I'm going to be talking about, since even though I love Epic Mickey 2, it's far from perfect. First off, the NPCs. There are very few NPCs that are in both Epic Mickey and Epic Mickey 2. Most of these examples are on Main Street, like the Usher, Paulie from the Ice Cream Parlor, and Jack Callie, the tabloid reporter. You'd think that since all the NPC models and animations are ported over from Epic Mickey, and that the game is on a much more powerful Xbox and PlayStation consoles, there would be the same amount, if not more, uniquely named NPCs. So let's enter Main Street. I can't wait to see Rufus McBark again. Okay, so we've got Seth. Better get those hidden Mickey photos for him. And then we've got... Male Dog. A bit weird, but oh well, maybe it's just a one-off. Hmm, what about this NPC? Female Cow. Oh, weird. Maybe let's talk to this Gremlin. They all had names in Epic Mickey. Let's see here. Blue Gremlin. Huh? What happened? So, most of the NPCs in Epic Mickey 2 just don't have unique names. If I had to make a guess, it's probably because of the rush development of Epic Mickey 2, since finishing the game and making it playable were probably a priority over putting Ezra back into Mean Street. Although it should be mentioned that NPCs with important roles or major side quests, like Seth, Gremlin Sparks, Polly from the Ice Cream Parlor, although Casey in the Emporium is just a male horse, and of course Gremlin Prescott. Imagine if the second boss of Epic Mickey 2 was just called Purple Gremlin. But at least the NPCs that did get the honour of a name stayed the same animal, right? Eh, wrong. The biggest example of this is in Mean Street. So you all remember Jack Kelly, right? The tabloid reporter that would try and sell you news for 5A tickets, but then you gave him your money, he just gave you information you already knew? Yeah, so remember how he's a horse NPC in Epic Mickey? Yeah, well in Epic Mickey 2, he's a cow. And no, I'm not just being rude, he literally is a cow NPC now. Why? I don't know. But then if we go to the Mean Street Cinema, we come across the Usher of the cinema, who is a cow NPC in the first game, but as if like magic, he's now a horse. So it would appear that at some point the Epic Mickey devs mixed up some stuff and switched Jack and the Usher's NPC types. Or did they? You see, I have a theory, an NPC theory if you will. I think, no, I know that in Epic Mickey 3, it would have been revealed that the Usher and Jack Kelly were in cahoots with each other, and teamed up with the pizza for the endgame of Epic Mickey 3, the power of tabloids. Or it really just is a developer oversight. Ah oh well, we can dream, can't we? Another NPC that morphs species in Epic Mickey 2 is Gilda, the NPC with all those races and the different hub worlds. In the first Epic Mickey, she's a goat, but in Epic Mickey 2, she's a cow. There's not much else to say, just another oversight by the Epic Mickey devs, I guess. And now, let's talk about the hub world. Now, I know that the reason that they changed stuff up is because you can't have a game with worlds exactly the same as the last game, or else people would get bored. But, in this world, right, they're rebuilding from the earthquakes, meaning that the priority should be building stuff that was destroyed. Not adding new stuff like Main Street switching around the positions of the shops, or Oztown adding a river, or Ventureland adding a treehouse, or Boggy's changing the literal layout. Like the first bit that you go into with the shop, that's not an Epic Mickey, that's exclusive to Epic Mickey 2. And then once you get to the bit that is an Epic Mickey, it's completely changed. Even Oswald says it when he first enters Boggy's. Boggy's, huh? Whew. This place looks different from how I remember it. You could probably package Boggy Easy as a completely different area, and I would have believed you. Okay, this video is just turning a bit of a rant. Uh, let's move on before I start just, like, trashing the entire game. Because I really do like it a lot. So, easily Epic Mickey 2's biggest blunder story-wise is Oswald. Not in terms of his character design, they didn't make him a tortoise or anything. But in terms of his character. The first Epic Mickey made sure that the players knew that Oswald was very isolated and untrusting of anyone after the horrors of the Thinner Disaster and the Blot Wars. And yeah, through a tenth of the adventure he shares with Mickey, 
Like seriously, Oswald's just chilling in Wasteland for most of the game. He does learn some valuable life lessons and becomes more friendly and trusting. And I think it's safe to assume that he would still be a bit reluctant to trust people. Especially someone who fought very hard against him in the original game. Then after the Mad Doctor shows up, not only does Oswald go off with him alone after about a minute of seeing him again, but he at least mostly trusts him throughout the entire game. Come on, Hortensia. Doesn't everybody deserve a second chance? Oswald, tell me, Oswald, do you think it can be done? I don't understand. He told me no one could defeat me. I will tell you all must understand it. All the things that went so wrong, it was I who planned it. You heard him! He worked alone! His evil bed! It's back! You do not! But the mad doctor already closed the site down because of the alleged danger. He said it was too dangerous, and he put Pete Pan in charge too. I can't believe the doc lied to me! There's also the issues of Oswald's AI, but that's not really relevant to the story. Overall, Epic Mickey 2 is clearly a game that needs a lot more time in the oven, in both in terms of the game and the story. But hey, at least we got a sequel, and with Epic Mickey rebrushed, we might be able to give the game another go, one which fixes all the problems of the original. And now let's welcome a new video segment called Epic Mickey News. Apparently there was a new station in Epic Mickey. Oh wait, there is! Hello, hello, I am Ricky Rikishu, and you are watching DNN News. In breaking news, a prototype trailer for Epic Mickey has been discovered. Reporting on the field is our designated Epic Mickey expert, Animations Down Under. Hello there, so what is this thing, and why should we care about it? Hi, so what we have here is a never-before-seen trailer animated in the betas of Epic Mickey. And yes, that means it has the skinny, sonic -y design that I was talking about in my Scrap Characters video. Now, this video was most likely used as a way to sell Disney executives on what Junction Point wanted to do with Mickey. And although quite a lot of things are different from the final Wii version, surprisingly it shares quite a few things in common with the finished product. It picks up at the second part of the opening cutscene in the final game, with Mickey captured by the Mad Doctor. It also includes short clips of the blot and Mickey's fallen to wasteland, a spatter chase on Mean Street, and at the end there's an Epic Mickey logo that stayed with the game all the way to release. The most interesting thing about this video are all the differences or hints of things that are in the final release. The most shocking thing of this prototype video is, brace yourselves, the characters actually talk. Well, Mickey Mouse, welcome to the Cartoon Wasteland. Well, just the Mad Doctor talks, but it's still dialogue. Most of his dialogue is just exposition, explaining the side effects of Mickey absorbing the blot's ink. Which includes, but isn't limited to, impaired mobility, reduced creative faculties, and weakness and fatigue. The doc isn't after Mickey's heart in this version, instead being after Mickey's ink. Which I guess is what would make him remembered again? I'm not too sure. The brush is nowhere to be seen, instead Mickey just draws from his own supply of ink, causing him to lose some of his ink when he uses an attack leaving him looking slightly sketchy, literally. Mickey's moveset is much bigger than in the final game, with the surfing ability, the ability to create toon circles which can be used as trampolines or as a hole to trap enemies, using up Mickey's ink to make a massive inky tidal wave, Mickey can glide, and includes a precursor to the sketches, which includes a trumpet, a fire hydrant, and a gun. Yep, in this video, Mickey Mouse has a gun. Damn Disney, didn't know you had it in ya. Now let's talk character designs. The overall style of the video is very different from Epic Mickey. The final game is very much inspired by 1930s Disney, but this video takes on a more edgy, unique style. Spatters look a little bit the same, but with really long arms and pupilless eyes. The blot is also very different, and looks less... inky than in the final game? It looks a lot more like a Dementor from Harry Potter. It's also directly referred to as the Phantom Blot, when the final game is just called The Blot. Also at the very end, the Mad Doctor mentions warning Oswald of Mickey, hinting at Oswald's original status as a villain in Epic Mickey. And then Mickey does the unexpected and actually kills the Mad Doctor with ink. At least the trailer alludes to it. Very dark. And last but not least, it had a proposed release date of 2008. Yeah, I think it was a good idea that it wasn't released then. 
Imagine if Epic Mickey 2's rush development was on the first game. That had not end well. Overall, it's pretty clear that this is a concept for a game before it landed on Wii exclusivity, since there ain't no way the Wii had the power for all of this. I know I said in my Scrap Characters video that I didn't really like the beta Mickey design, but after seeing it in action, eh, I wouldn't mind an epic Mickey game with this version of Mickey. Alright, that's all from me. Back to you, Ricky. And in other news, Australian Epic Mickey YouTuber Animation Sound Under has received the first piece of fan art. The art in question was created by Drawing Underscore Mason on Instagram. We reached out to Mr. Down Under for a comment, but only received this as a response. Don't worry, he'll be fine. Hopefully. Anyway, that's all from us at the end of news. Have a good night, and don't forget to tune in next time. Bye bye. Hello, hello, hola, ciao, and bonjour. I am Ricky Ricochu, and you are watching DNN News. A breaking news: a prototype trailer for Epic Mickey has been found. Reports on the future. I keep saying reports on the fail. We reached out to Mr. Down Under for a comment, but he only received this as a response. No, he did not receive a response. We were the ones that received the response. God dang it.